we have reached the halfway point of the year six months down six months to go which means that we need to do a top 10 books that i read in the first half of 2024 Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina, and I make bookish content here on this channel every week, and then move reviews here at the weekend. In the description box below, you will find all of my social links, including my blog, my Goodreads, where I have reviewed some of the books that I'm going to talk about today. Also, all of the books that I'm going to talk about today are going to be linked in the description box as well. So, um, this list is in no particular order. These are just 10 books I've really enjoyed from the first half of 2024. Firstly, the book that gave me such a big book hangover, I didn't manage to read basically anything in the month following its release. Um, and this one is Every Move You Make by C.L. Taylor, which, you know, a C.L. Taylor thriller is always going to be a fabulous thing. She leaves you wanting more at the end of every single page. So you cannot put it down. And this one was no different. I absolutely loved this one. I'd never read anything about stalkers before. And as you can see from the tagline, the only way to stop a stalker is to become one yourself. Um, and I just didn't see any of the reveals coming. And it was fabulous and breathtaking. And I read it in 48 hours. It was just so fabulous. I really, really loved it. Highly, highly recommend. Adult psychological thriller. Really, really good start to the year for me. Um, and then a non-fiction that I really enjoyed that I've been meaning to read for a long time. So this is not a 2024 release, but a it was sat on Katrina's audiobook uh, TBR for a long time. Um, and this is Can't Even by Anna Helen Peterson, which is How the Millennials Became the Burnout Generation. It'd be interesting to read an updated one of this one following the kind of two most recent presidencies in the US and then the change of the political system in the UK. I'd be really interested to read an updated one um, based on that. But um, I was worried I was going to read this one and be stressed out by it. But it became just a really interesting non-fiction listen. Not quite what I expected, a little bit more into the science than I expected. Um, but I ident definitely identified with a lot of things that this author was talking about being a millennial myself and um, being somebody who works a lot of hours. Um, so that was an interesting one. Um, then let me talk about a couple of the physical books I have here. I have one of this year's Quick Reads books, actually, because um, I don't know that I've included a Quick Reads on my top 10 recently and so I was like but this one really had an impact on me and if you haven't seen my quick reads reading vlog I will leave it linked up above because you see the impact it had on me as I was reading it but this is Those People Next Door by Kia Abdullah, Kaya Abdullah um, and then I found out that this is actually a full length book as well so I've read the quick reads version of it so I have been spoiled so I wouldn't be able to read the full version of it but I would definitely read more from this author because I thought this was fabulous again couldn't put it down I was walking around making my cup of coffee whilst reading it going and getting things from other rooms whilst reading it going to the bathroom whilst reading it um and just picked it up read it cover to cover and I was like wow that was so good and it was so impactful the way um we got sort of so much within what was this one 120 pages yeah 125 ish pages um and you just got so much within this book it was tiny book that packed a punch highly highly recommend and i mean as you can see this one is a pound my library has it when i was in waterstones the other day they still had them so really really recommend this one it's got a very solid very definite place on my top 10 books of the year um, and then one that I absolutely definitely have a review of on my blog and one that I've talked about um, this author on this channel before and this is Date With Destiny by Lucy Vine which I'm sure that you saw coming up as a one of my top 10 books of the year. I think I even talked about in my wrap up video saying that this was definitely one of my favourite books of the year so far. Um, and yeah, this one was just fabulous. I loved reading it. I was glad to have a proof copy of it because I could just sit and pick it up and keep reading and keep reading and keep reading. Lucy Vine never fails to make me laugh. She's funny in person. She's funny on paper. I really, really love her books and they've always made me laugh and I will always, you know, continue to buy her books. She is absolutely an autobiography. Auto by author for me. Oh, those all, all those words went together then. So this is about um, Ginny and some uh, sort of 
fortune teller tarot card reader that she had that said three bad things would happen a heartbreak a loss of independence and a death and three good things a life-changing trip reconnecting with someone and meeting her soulmate and so we see her going through these things and thinking of like what things these things could line up with and just generally her kind of like having a good time with her friends and having a rubbish time with her love life and having a questionable relationship with her mother and it was just a great time highly highly recommend if you haven't picked this one up yet really really recommend it it was a really great read um and then one which technically came out in december and i did pre-order and it arrived at school and we sniffed it and enjoyed it and then i was like didn't get to it till january however that is because i wanted to read the rest of the series again before reading this one and this is of course part five of the heartstopper series by alice oseman and i did absolutely reread all of them together i talked about this one and i talked about reading this one in my bout of books vlog from the bout of book books at the very start of the year so i will leave that video linked up above in case you haven't seen it however i just so adored this one and having reread the si this series i then wanted to re-watch the series again and i may have started re-watching the series but then Parted, parted ways with netflix for a little bit don't currently have netflix so um yeah i really really love this one and um i'm loving the fact that we've got a thriller and a quick read and a non-fiction and a rom-com and a graphic novel all on our top 10 list of the year so far let me see what else we've got on here okay a couple more rom-coms coming your way one more spicy than others um this one will come as no surprise to you that this one is on here. This is Seven Summers by Page Two. Six Summers to Fall in Love, One Summer to Change It All. I read this one and erroneously thought by getting to like 96% or something without having my heart broken that maybe Page Two was sparing me on this occasion. However, then we got to that like last little chunk of the book and I was like, oh, okay, you're going to throw it at me now, are you? Obviously, no spoilers here on the channel. Um, but yeah, Six Summers to Fall in Love. We've got this kind of remote location all pushed together through friendship and work and the location itself. And like, are you going to fall in love? Will they? Won't they? Then we go long distance. Will they? Won't they? Then we're back reunited, even though they hate each other. Will they? Won't they? And then the twists, the twists, multiple revelations at the end here. This book has a little bit of everything. It is classic page tune, but just like a gut punch at the same time as being classic page tune in the sense of you go away and you travel and you fall in love and then she hits you with it. Obviously, this was always going to be on my top 10 for the year because it's page tune and we love her on the channel. Um, so yes very much so on my top 10 of the year and then let me find it here one that I was expecting to enjoy but it was one of those that kind of like definitely it came along at the right time um, and this is The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren which I started listening to it and I was like oh this is so fun and then it got a bit spicy and then it got a bit well they weren't they as well and I was like oh this is so fun um and i just absolutely could not stop listening to this one i normally do my christina lawrence as audiobooks i think from the first christina lauren i com consumed i read it as an audiobook and i really love them and although this is a follow-up to the paradise or say paradise project from last year or the year before the other one um stands on its own right so you don't have to have read any christina lauren books to be able to enjoy this one it was just fabulous we had like fake dating to the extreme um and just oh it was just so good that film that came out recently that was about um being sort of fake together for things again that but to the extreme and then some hot sex and then some like really interesting friendships as well i really enjoyed it if you haven't read christine and lauren it would be a great starting point for you i thought it was really fun really good but definitely be warned it's not for the faint-hearted in terms of those spicy scenes um and then oh i've lost my list now then we've got another non-fiction for you which i really enjoyed and then I cheated a little bit because I put this one on here, even though it was a reread. So we've got the nonfiction first. This is 
Being Henry, The Fonz and Beyond by Henry Winkler, which even though I am no longer in Denver right now, my Denver library inspired me <laughs> to read this one because they had an event with Henry Winkler literally the week before I arrived back in Denver for a visit. And so I put my hold on this one with my library and listened to the audiobook of it, which is narrated by him. And I learned so much about him. And I wanted to rewatch Happy Days and I wanted to rewatch Scream. And I love the part that he had in Parks and Recreation. It made me really want to watch Parks and Recreation again. But like, I didn't know that he'd been married for as long as he did. And I didn't know that he had children. And I didn't know the kind of the level that he was dyslexic as well and so it was really inspiring as well as being really funny and really entertaining and so definitely deserves a place on my top 10 of the list so far year so far sorry um and then let me see what i have missed uh yes so even though it took me like three months to read because it is so long i will never be i will never turn down an excuse to go and visit the Walsh Family with My Favourite Mistake by Marion Keys. Definitely be warned, this one is long. It is very long. And it did take me the best part of three months to listen to just because I would listen to 20 minutes here and 20 minutes there. And that does not add up to like a massively long audiobook. I think perhaps if I'd got a physical copy of this one and sat down and read it, I might have been in a slightly better position. But it revisits Anna Walsh and The Walsh Family and Anna going back to Ireland from New York and what it's like there when she comes back post-pandemic, perimenopausal and semi-single. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't, I don't need to say any more other than it's Marion Key's Walsh family book. It's always going to make me laugh. It's always going to make me think. It was a touch on the long side. However, I can forgive her because I was getting to know the Walsh family again. So that was great. And then finally, that Chi Chi reread that I told you about because I reread this book with my class. Now, I read this book for the first time with it being outside of my comfort zone, outside of my like genre comfort zone, and therefore an unusual book for me to read. And then when I saw that we were doing a World War II topic, in my class this year I was like I have to get a copy of this book and we have to read it I thought they would enjoy it but they were literally begging to read the next chapter of the book if I would end on a cliffhanger they would beg to read more they immediately wanted to take it away and reread it themselves once we'd finished they were telling people at home about it they would leave at the end of the day and go out and tell people they were picking up like, oh, I can't believe that this happened and oh, what's going to happen with this one. And this one is Cross My Heart by Carmen Reed, which had an impact on it on me the first time that I read it. But I think the fact that we've got a kind of like girl hero of this one, the fact that she's Belgian and not like German or French that we normally see or perhaps Polish. Um, and the fact that it is kind of a bit scary and very dramatic I think just made it fabulous so this is a YA historical fiction with a female lead character she's a bit spy -y. she's a bit rebellious I think Star Wars Princess Leia um and let me tell you this is like outside of when I first read Wonder with a class this book had the most impact it was so good and um yeah I, I, I know if any of the, them are watching, they will agree as well. Um, so even though it's a reread, it's made it on my top 10 books I read this year because it's the quickest I've read a novel with a class as well. Um, and yeah, I, I really like the spread that my top 10 books of 2024 has given me in terms of genres and formats and everything. Um, so yeah, let me know what's been the best books that you've read so far in 2024. What are you currently reading that might show up as the best books of the second half of 2024? And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future bookish content. And um, I will be back with another video for you very soon. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.